Hey folks, in this video we're going to make this necklace. The necklace in question is one of the 5,000 artifacts found in the tomb of Tutankhamun when Howard Carter discovered it in 1922. It's a highly iconic piece and there are countless replicas you can buy, but I'm making one for personal reasons. It's a story full of adventure and drama and... not really. Uh, you see, recently a high quality replica of this necklace came up for auction and I was set to buy it. But it was early in the morning, so I set an alarm and I went to sleep. And uh, while I was asleep my phone updated itself and turned off all my alarms, so I missed the auction. So after screaming into a pillow to vent my frustration, I decided I'm a jeweler, I'm gonna make one myself. So let's get started. The first thing I had to do was make a master mold. So I printed out a picture of the necklace, the original one. And then I traced over some Sculpey clay. And then I went through the very long process of giving the clay shape. This took a while. A very long while. But eventually... A few minutes later... I need to put a couple of pieces of steel here on the back. Uh, so it makes it easier for me to use magnets to remove it from the mold later, from the sand. And I should have done this uh, embedding it in the clay while it was soft, but I forgot completely about it. Ah, super glue on the fingers. After getting my fingers unstuck, it was time to make the mold. And I'm gonna be doing this with sand casting. And I have a really fine Petrobond sand that I use, so I'm hoping all the detail is gonna come out just fine. For the first attempt, I thought I was going to make this out of silver. The problem is I needed a lot of silver, this thing is quite enormous. And I can only melt about 4 ounces in this crucible that I have of the blowtorch. And that proved not to be enough. Nope. So the first mold failed and I had to make another one. This time I decided I was going to try to cast this out of aluminum bronze. Aluminum bronze is a bronze alloy, of course. Uh, it constitutes mostly of copper, but instead of tin that normally goes into the bronze, we use aluminum. And you can add a few other trace elements to change the characteristics, but we're not going to get into that. It's just basically mostly copper with a little bit of aluminum. Good enough. Making it out of aluminum bronze, as you can see, is a little bit more involved than casting it with silver in my workshop. One characteristic of aluminum bronze is it does not like to flow into tight spaces and this is a very shallow mode. So drum roll for disappointment or excitement and, and it didn't flow. It didn't flow. Well, 
I'm terrible at quitting, so since the furnace was still hot, I threw the metal back into it, made another mold, melted it all over again, and gave it another try. And again, prepare for disappointment. And it filled the whole thing. Oh, I could cry. But I saved the crying for later because I still had a lot of work to do. Starting with cleaning it up and then making sure the cat's approved and cutting off the sprue and then refining the shape. That last part took a few days. I am really happy with the way it's coming out, and, uh, and now I'm waiting on a shipment of uh, semi-precious stones to finish the necklace, so I have to take a little break. I don't know if it's gonna arrive in a week or a month, but it will arrive and then we'll finish this. Three weeks later. And now they are here, so work can continue. Now, to start, we're going to set aside the pendant part of the necklace, and we're going to concentrate on the necklace part of the necklace. To attach the necklace that I'm going to be making with these beads, I'm going to use lobster claws on both sides of these little hooks that I have on the, on the back, so the whole thing is completely removable from either direction, and I think that's going to be the best way to go about it. This isn't the tutorial for making beaded necklaces, there's another video for that, check it out. Here I'm using two strings because it's a lot of heavy beads and uh, the necklace itself is very heavy, so this is gonna give it extra strength, even though the string is pr practically unbreakable. The basics of it is you put a crimping bead on one end and then you put a whole bunch of beads along the string and uh, crimp at the other end, put the lobster clasps and that should be it. The ever-present cat hair. Where is all this cat hair coming from? We're not even near the cats. Now the last two golden pieces. Look at that, I made a mistake. This should have been lapis, turquoise, cornelian, turquoise, lapis. And here we have lapis, turquoise, cornelian, turquoise, turqu uh, cornelian, turquoise, lapis. So, do I redo it? Yes, absolutely. I have to redo it. A few moments later. Right, let's make absolutely sure we have it right this time because that was uh, quite a waste of time, that mistake I made. I think this time is good. Let's crimp it and it'll be done. All right, this time the pattern is correct, so we can get back to work on this. I had several techniques at my disposal. The original one is made of a technique called cloisonne, where uh, tiny little pieces of gemstone are set between little walls of gold. That was technically a possibility for me, but it's prohibiting the amount of time it would take. So I experimented with alternatives. First I considered using glass enamel, but after experimenting with it and bejeweling an old key to try it out, I was not liking the results. So I tried a cold enamel product that got some acceptable results, but it was not pleasing me still. One excellent alternative for cold enamel is nail polish. And also I have the technique that I developed to create a stone epoxy, I have a short video about it somewhere. And to try out all these options, I spray painted my precious model to make it look golden, and then went about trying out all kinds of different things on it. In the end, after trying all these other options, I decided I'm going to use the stone epoxy technique. That of course meant grinding a whole bunch of beautiful little rocks into dust, 
which you already saw in the previous shot, but uh, that's because it was filmed out of order, so here's the grinding. I came up with a better way to do the initial crushing of the stone using pliers and a little plastic bag. You must lay right there. Thank you. Before doing the colorful work on the front, there was one last thing I wanted to do on the back. Just a little bit of information for posterity. This electric engraver makes such horrible noise that whenever I have to use it, I always use it inside this box that I made that suppresses some of the sound. Do you approve? <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Before mixing up the epoxy and all that, I decided just to make sure I don't make a mistake, I would put a tiny little colored dot on each of the spaces to indicate which one goes in where. <laughs> Talking about epoxy, I wanted to do a shout out to Alumalite because of their amazing customer service that I got from them. I bought some of their amazing clear cast and uh, it had a really strong earthy smell, it was not normal. So I contacted the company and they said that epoxy starts to smell once it's past its use-by date. And uh, they sent me a replacement absolutely for free, they didn't have to pay anything. So big thanks to them. That's very good customer service, that's how it should be. Thank you. And here it is! I am extremely pleased with the way this one came out. It more than makes up for the auction that I missed out on. It's not without quirks, the carnelian turned out a lot more transparent than I expected, but uh, it matches the beads on the, ne on the necklace, so that's fine. <laughs> it's still, in my opinion, came out really good. Now I just need a pretty model to showcase it. So, as always, if you have any questions, any comments, please leave them below. And uh, thank you so much for coming along. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.